Okay, cool. So uh, to wrap up, um, uh, thanks everybody for for this for sticking with us throughout this whole class. Um, uh, oh, what happened to my screen? Oh, there it is. I, I clapped my hands and the screen went off. Okay. Um, so so thanks everybody. So I just want to do a, a really brief review and then we'll we'll talk some more. But I just want to do a really quick review of some of the stuff we talked about at the very start of this semester. So to remember, we have this spectrum of of threats of problems, right? Where we go from an emergency, which is really what happens in your house, right? When, when your water pipe floods and then your house gets messed up, that, that's a real emergency, but it's only affecting you. Disaster is gonna affect, you know, you and your, disaster is when that flood, um, um, you're away for the weekend and it, it erupts and it flows from your house down the street, down to your neighbors and floods your neighbor's house, and your neighbor's neighbor, right? It affects, several of us, like our neighborhood, our community, right? When we have many communities impacted, we, that, that is the catastrophe, right? And so we're, we have the spectrum of stuff. Um, but if it's happening just to you, that can be life-changing and problematic and everything, right? And it's just that much more complicated when, when it's happening both to you and to hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of other folks. We talked about uh, similarities of natural and anthropogenic things and that they, we do share a lot of these similarities as we were talking about nuclear issues and uh, pandemics and things of that nature. Um, and we talked about uh, some, some key things that, the, that this is, the, this is the, the, you know, Sendai, this sort of UN framework of how we classify disasters. And while there's many things on here, there's certain things that we tend to pay attention to more and that we focus on on our class, things like, um, tsunamis and uh, 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 river floods and sea level rise, wildfires, things of that nature. Um, but but to to be sure, there's there's a whole host of things that we did not talk about in this class. But hopefully, these ideas and these concepts and these approaches that we've talked about make sense if you um, unfortunately have to experience or or be associated with um, one of these other disasters. And I think it's important to look at the similarities and, and to use that to help us understand what we're going, what we might be going through when we're going through those disasters, what, what we're going through, and then what we can, we can expect or what we should be working on post-crisis. Post, uh, um, we talked about the different phases of disasters, right? That we have, we, we sort of have the, the before it happens, we have the initial um, onset, we have how we're in it, and right initially we're focused on protecting people and, and critters and, and just that immediate life protection and stabilization. And then once we get that stabilized, then evacuations or whatever the case may be, then we move on to sort of more stabilizing the environment and, and, and making sure the houses are okay and this and that, and then onto the actual process of recovery. And then hopefully laying the groundwork to mitigate, to minimize whatever the future wildfire, earthquake, hurricane, whatever is going to be. Um, again, as a reminder, we have, we have uh, and for U.S. disasters, several key players that, that in almost all these cases are, are playing themselves out. Usually that's FEMA at the federal level, our state government and, and state agencies at, at, at the state level. And then we may have local governments, depending on where we live, um, et cetera. And then the importance of non-governmental organizations, church groups, volunteer groups, Red Cross, things, things of this nature. Um, we talked about this stuff. Um, and uh, again, uh, th this it's important as we've been talking about, mostly we've focused on the, especially my lectures, recorded lectures, the technical aspects of things, right? But then in our readings and some of the videos and stuff, we've, I've tried to, to make sure that we are thinking about the environmental justice side of things, about the emotional side of things, about the stuff that isn't maybe traditionally considered part of a part of uh, disasters or disaster management, but are really really key, right? Um, for example, um, a huge thing that's come out um, since Katrina has been the importance of animals, right? How we originally said, oh, we can't bring dogs to our shelter or our companion pets to the shelter because they might bite someone, they might bark or whatever, or scare some people, which is a totally reasonable concern. But then because of that, people weren't going, we realized people weren't going to shelters because they, they love their dog, they love their cat, they love their whatever. And so 
So, you know, not dealing with the human side of disasters is a recipe to not deal effectively with disasters. And so, so we talked about that in terms of um, uh, uh, we, a couple of different examples, but this one, right, was before, before the disaster, we have this, uh, you know, um, emotionally like, oh my God, intense, and then emotionally not very intense. And we sort of start out, we're in this sort of background level and we're a little bit agitated, a little bit agitated. Then we have the, the crisis. And unlike a lot of the movies or whatever, when almost invariably, when the disaster actually hits, people are surprisingly mellow. Most folks do not run around with their head cut off. Most people do not loot. Most people do not, you know, ah, you know that kind of stuff. People are usually very calm and, and, and uh, uh, collected. And then once, once the, the, the storm hits or the, or the shaking stops or whatever, almost everybody is super cool. Almost everybody is helping their neighbors, whether they know them or not. Almost everybody is checking on the elderly person in the apartment next to them, that kind of stuff. And when all the stories come out, oh my God, this person was heroic. Oh my God, the heroic first responders. Oh my God, that's the norm. That's the norm. But the news stories always treat it as if it's some exception to the norm. Most people are cool. Um, but that lasts for a while. And then once you know the sort of adrenaline burns off, once once you've been sleeping outside for a couple of days or whatever, that starts to wane. And this honeymoon period ends. And then when people are like, hey, are we gonna get some water here? Are we gonna get some water? And when the, the support structures don't bring that water, don't bring that support, then we get into challenges. And then people start to get uh, uh, depressed and angry and all that kind of stuff. And that usually lasts for a while. The triggering event is oftentimes when people go to get help, say for a home loan or for, for a hotel voucher or something of that nature. And, and so those, those are key parts of, of the emotional response. And then over time, we have setbacks. I and mean, over time, um, most folks tend to build back to uh, an okay place, uh, but that might take months, that might take years, depends on, on the situation. But, but that, that very similar emotional disaster response is, um, is something that we see over uh, uh, many, many um, incidents. Questions, or, or let me ask this, well, what are some other themes that you all, um, in thinking back over our, our readings or our, our viewings or our chats or whatever, what are some of the things you guys, uh, some themes, some disaster themes that you saw repeated over and over again? Okay, good. So some things do have that cyclical nature, right? Wildfire, well, we don't really have wildfire season anymore. We just have wildfire all the time. But, but, but for many things, right? Storm season, rainy season, right? So some things really do have that predictability. And so that can be good because we can know to get ready. It could also be stressful and might be get, getting disturbed and worried, but, but good. So some things have a periodicity. Good. What else? Yeah. Right, right. So, so we've fallen behind. Much of our infrastructure gets uh, uh, C's or D, D as in dog ratings from uh, engineering, you know, civil engineering groups when they look at you know the bridge folks or the or the or the street folks or whatever. And so that's a problem, right? That's a real that's a problem for day to day life. But it also makes disasters more likely to happen. Makes us more vulnerable to disasters. We should be um, using that to, when we do our improvements in our roads or, or, or bridges or whatever, we should be using that opportunity to make them more resilient, whether that's wildfires, earthquakes, storm damage, whatever. So good, good. Other themes, other, other sort of things that seem to pop up um, from pretty consistently when you're looking at this case study or that case study or whatever. No. Give, give me one or two more before we wrap up. Recovery, really long. Recovery can be really long. Yes. It need not be, but in most cases, 
um, uh, if, if particularly if we're moving more into like the catastrophe side of things, yes, it often takes quite some time. And almost everybody underestimates the time it takes to whatever, get the building permits, put the house back, to, to find the school to send your kids to, whatever. Um, and so, yeah, so, so we need a, lot of, uh, need a lot of good music. And I don't want to encourage people to drink, but you know, a lot of sort of help. You sometimes need a little help. And, 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 and we should have the gift of allowing ourselves to understand that, right? That, that it's okay to not solve all the problems in the first week. And, and um, sometimes when we try to do that too fast, we'll burn ourselves out. And that's a recipe for, for family stress and, and, and burning relationships with friends and stuff like that. So, so it's okay that's, well, it's not okay, but it's the norm that things take a long time um, to, to fully recover if, if, if that term applies to the person's circumstances. Good, something else, some other, other theme. right right yes so so every, just about everything can be made better with more effective planning right failing to plan is irresponsible to say the least but it's also going to be more expensive right it's going so it, it, to this notion of oh it's too expensive to um you know, especially early on in the pandemic. Well, we, we can't afford this money for this pandemic. Are you kidding me? You think, you think it's great now with, with the supply chain all screwed up and all they think this is better, right? So, so um, it's important to also, when we talk about planning, to talk about what the business as usual situation would be, right? So to fail to plan, to not do the infrastructure, not do the investment, to not create the, the, the response plan, uh, is usually bad, it's usually bad. Cool. All right, any other last ones? Anyone wanna chime in with? Okay, cool. All right. Well, the last thing I have to say is just to talk to you guys about your final assignment. So uh, let me wait for this thing to uh, unfreeze here. Hold on a sec. Okay, so let's talk about your final assignment. <laughs>